Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Um, today uh, is the lecture on logistic regression for polycotomous outcome. What we are going to cover today is the uh, introduction for logistic regression for polycotomous outcome and uh, we will go and see what are the objectives for the lecture and then I will proceed with uh, an introduction to the model and in heading 4 we will study or I will let you know what are the models that you can use to analyze multinomial outcome data and Next, there will be a multinomial logic model, model comparison, and model with interaction covariates, and likelihood function for polytomous model where we look at calculating the probability and uh, the references uh, that you can look for if you want to understand better about um, the lecture. All right, so um, you have data where the outcome is categorical and the outcome has more than two categories. You know that, you know that if the outcome is binary, then you can use logistic regression. If your outcome is categorical, and it has more than two categories it has four categories or five or maybe more than that then you might need to do an extension to the logistic regression so what we hope that at the end of the lecture you should be able to understand the concept of logistic regression model for data with multinomial outcome. You can call such data as multinomial data or polycotomous data or polytomous data. And we will look at how to estimate logistic regressions with multinomial outcome data. And you should be able to make inferences based on the uh, logistic regression uh, with multinomial outcome and you should be able to um, predict the outcome based on the logistic regression model for such outcome and you need also to perform model checking to know if the logistic regression model is appropriate or not for your outcome or you have problems with some outliers or some influential observations. For the introduction, some motivation for us. We know that some data come with multinomial outcomes in which case the outcome variable is nominal or polycotomous but which means that they or the outcome has more than two levels or two categories. But in this kind of data, the multinomial or the, or the nominal or the, or the polycotomous data the outcome has no natural ordering, all right? The ranking or the ordering is not interesting for you. If uh, the outcome has ordering or ranking, then it is best treated with ordinal outcome data, okay? Um, for both of these models, the, multinomial out the multinomial data or the ordinal data data that has a ranking or ordering 
we can modify the binary logistic regression that we have done before to make ex estimation and inferences. Okay, again, if your data has the outcome which is categorical and the categorical outcome has more than two levels or two categories, then you can call the data as multinomial data, polychotomous data, or polytomous data. We can use logistic regression to analyze such data. We can use logistic regression to do estimation, to do inferences, and to do prediction for such data. Right, and if you use logistic regression for such data, then we call the analysis as polytomous or multinomial logistic regression. Again, you must remember that polychotomous outcome data or polychotomous outcome variable does not have any natural order, no ranking. All right, whenever the outcome variable has the natural order or ranking, then you prefer to use another analysis known as ordinal logistic regression. All right? Um, examples of data, data that have polychotomous outcome variable, again, more than two levels or two categories, include, you know, seems symptoms of diseases for example absent symptom mild symptom moderate symptom severe symptom in this case even though it looks like a ranking or ordinal outcome but if the researcher is not interested to look at the ordering or the ranking of the outcome, then you can use polychotomous or multinom multinomial logistic regression. All right. Um, you might have uh, data on tumor invasiveness, for example, in situ, which means the tumor is located there, or the tumor is spreading but locally invasive, or metastasis where it has spread to other parts of the body. Another example is patient preferred treatment regime selected among three or more options, for example, oral medication only, oral medication plus injection medication or injections only. And you can have a numerical outcome variable which you can categorize based on different cut of points and the newly created categorical variable now can be treated as a nominal or polychotomous or multinomial outcome variable or can be also treated as ordinal outcome so this goes back to you as the researcher the scientist what is your interest to analyze your data without looking at the ranking or the ordering or to look at the data and the relationship between covariates and the outcome based on the on the ordinality ranking or ordering right if you are not interested in the ordering the ranking then use multinomial logistic regression Models to analyze multinomial outcome data. You can use multinomial logit model. There are other models that can be used to analyze multinomial outcome data. But in our case, we will focus on multinomial logit model or logistic regression. Um, so this is an extension of logistic regressions and that's why we call it multinomial logit or multinomial logistic regression. 
So again, in multinomial logistic regression, one of the categories of the outcome is designated as the reference category. And each of the other level is compared with this reference. It is like in binary logistic regression we have where you have a category, two categories of outcome coded as zero versus one. So you will compare the effect of covariate be to get one versus zero. But in this case, you have to do a bit more because your outcomes are more than two. All right? And the choice of reference category can be arbitrary. And as a researcher, you can decide what will be the best reference category. All right? And you have to be careful because uh, some software set the first category as the reference category, but other software will set the last category as the reference category. Uh, a good example is that uh, is between Stata and uh, the VGAM package in R. Both can analyze multinomial data, both can do multinomial logistic regression, but both treated the baseline category differently, all right? Where Stata used the least or the smallest group as the reference category. For example, if you have, uh, you have coded your outcome variable as 0, 1, 2, 0 will become the reference category. But in VGAM package in R, uh, if you code your if you code your data as one two three, then three will be the reference category, the largest one. Multinomial logic model is not the only models available. If you want to analyze data with multinomial outcome, you can do st stereotype logistic regression or alternative specific variables analysis. But these are beyond our scope. In multinomial logic model, for the estimation, um, you must remember that, you know, what we do in regression analysis is to be able to interpret to be able to assess the significance of the estimated coefficients or betas. So that is one of our objectives to perform estimation to get the um, beta values, okay, the, uh, the head beta and the regression parameter or the beta values indicate the relationship between uh, covariates with the outcome variable. Okay, and when it comes to multinomial logistic regression, it will um, associate the covariate with the outcome variable, but in this case, the outcome variable has more than two categories. Um, in Stata, if you have, if you estimated, if you estimate the beta value, which is the log odds, and then you exponentiate the beta value, the value that you get is called as relative risk ratio. Okay, relative risk ratio. And in multinomial logistic regression, for example, if you have three categories of outcome, outcome one, two, and three, the sum of probabilities for the three outcome categories must be equal to one. It means that the probability of getting the outcome coded as one and uh, plus the probability of getting the outcome coded as 2 plus the probability 
of getting the outcome coded as 3 will equal to 1. All right? That's the reason why the two odds like expressions in multinomial logistic regression are not the true odds. And multinomial logistic regression is really doing uh, binary logics, binary logics or binary logistic for all comparisons simultaneously. All right. Maybe you will think of you know doing a separate binary logistic regression, like for example between uh, group. 1 and group 0 and then between group 2 and group 0 and between group 3 and group 0 right so you do three separate binary logistic regression yes you can do but of course the much better way it is to analyze them simultaneously concurrently and that can be done via multinomial logistic regression Right. Um, similar to logistic regression, binary logistic regression, at the end, uh, from the beta value, from the regression coefficients, you can, you can transfer to, uh, you can estimate the log odds and the odds ratio. All right. For example, the log odds for comparing between outcome 0 and 1 is the log of probability d equal 1 given x1 divided by probability of outcome equal 0 given x1 equals alpha 1 plus beta 1 1 x1 okay now the log odds to compare between group or outcome 0 and 2 is log of probability d equal 2 given x1 divided by probability of d equals 0 given x1 equals alpha 2 plus beta 2 1 x1 So, if for example, we assume that the outcome labeled with y equals 0 is the reference outcome. So, the subscript on the odds ratio indicates which outcome is being compared to reference category outcome. It, it, is, some, it is confusing when you look at the outputs of your statistical analysis. So I have to warn you that you know you have to be careful when you look at the results from estimations because some software will give nice result, nice formatted result, and some software will give uh, very confusing result. They are accurate, but the arrangement of uh, betas and 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 p values and and other parameters are a bit. Uh, confusing right so um, the odds ratio for outcome y equal j versus y equal 0 for the covariate values of x equal a versus x equal b is uh, the odds ratio for the group j for a and b equal probability y equal j given x equal a divided by probability y equal 0 given x equal a divided by probability y equal j given x equal b divided by probability y equal 0 given x equal b um, and from there you can what we want to show here is just by by exponentiating the beta value you got the relative risk ratio the rrr okay Be because uh, this exponenti exponentiation of beta is not the true odds. Okay, these exponentiations of beta one one and exponentiations of beta two one in three categories outcome 
E are basically relative risk ratio. Interpretation. So this is uh, this example is taken from chapter three uh, from Applied Logistic Regression book by Hosmer and Lemershaw. It is very important for you to read the chapter. Um, in the example, the data has this outcome name as placement and uh, it is coded as zero as outpatient, one intermediate and three residential. And covariate is history of violence, B-I-O-L, coded as zero, no, and one yes. The research question is this placement for hospitalized adolescents depends on the history of violence or does history of violence predicts the placement for hospitalized adolescents or is there any relationship between the independent variable history of violence with the outcome variable placement right so in this table we see the result and if you remember there are three categories in the outcome variable and because of that you have two logic models logic for number one and logic for number two number one uh, will compare between one versus zero and two will compare between two versus zero and these are the regression parameters or regression estimates or the beta's value for history of violence i'm sorry this one and this is for the variable this is the standard error this is the um, uh, odds ratio or relative relative risk relative risk ratio RRR or OR whichever you prefer okay so if you interpret this result the estimated log odds among adolescents with history of violence to be placed in an intermediate facility one versus outpatients zero equals minus 1.124 plus 0.58 times 0.581 times one that the estimated log odds for adolescents with history of violence okay the estimated log odds among adolescents without history of violence to be placed in an intermediate facility versus uh, patients uh, outpatients equals minus 1.124 plus 0 0.581 times 0 right so you got estimated log odds for viol1 estimated log odds for viol0 so the estimated log odds ratio, the ratio between the two odds um, is minus 1.124 plus 0 0.581 times 1 divided by minus 1.124 plus 0 0.581 times 0 which actually equals because this is the log odds ratio uh, 0 0.581 times 1 minus 0 so this equal 0 0.581 okay that's the estimated log odds ratio between uh, viol1 versus viol2 from the estimated log odds ratio you can get the estimated odds um, uh, estimated odds ratio which actually so which 
can be interpreted as the estimated odds among adolescents with history of violence, VIOL equal 1, to be placed in the intermediate placement, okay, intermediate facility placement 1 versus outpatient placement 0 is 1.79, this one, times greater than the odds among adolescents without history of violence, VIOL equal, uh, equal 0. So this is the estimated odds ratio or the estimated relative risk ratio, RRR. Okay. So remember this is, this is the estimated log odds, the estimated log odds, the estimated log odds ratio, the estimated odds ratio, and uh, and how about this one? This, this is the so uh, for 3.1, the second pane, the odds among adolescents with history of violence, VIOL equal 1, to be placed in the residential facility, placement 2 versus outpatient is 3.10 times greater than the odds among adolescents without a history of violence. So this is the estimated odds ratio or the estimated relative risk ratio. So um, the in interpret interpretation wise, it is very similar to binary logistic regression, but you need to interpret for each of the pain. So you got one pain here, two second pain here, all right? And for the numerical covariate, we know about this. Any continuous covariate that is modeled as linear in the logic has a single estimated coefficient for each logic function. So if you exponentiate the estimated coefficient for a numerical covariate, it gives the estimated odds ratio or estimated relative risk ratio for a change of one unit of the numerical covariate right so now let's go to uh, example number two example number two uh, is taken from uh, logistic regression a self-learning text by professor david klenbaum um, this table appears on page 439 The results come from this data where the outcome is cancer type coded as other types of cancer. One, adenosquamous cancer. One, uh, sorry, other types of cancer equals two, adenosquamous cancer equals one, and adenocarcinoma cancer equals zero. The covariate is age group coded as older subjects age 65 to 79 coded as 1 and younger subjects age 50 to 64 coded as 0 so the estimated odds ratio okay the estimated odds ratio um oh well, this is wrong okay this is not estimated odds ratio this is the estimated regression coefficient or the estimated beta or the estimated log odds okay sorry this is not odds ratio all right um, so we have intercept one intercept two H group one H group two okay um, this is the beta the estimated log odds this is the standard error and this is the symbol of the parameters alpha 2, alpha 1, beta 2, 1, beta 1, 1. So uh, the equation for the estimated log odds for other category versus adenocarcinoma, category 2 versus category 0 is negative 1.45, this one, plus 0 0.426 this one times age group so that's the log 
cause equation okay the logic equation for category 2 versus 0 if you exponentiate the beta for the age group this will yield the estimated odds ratio or the estimated relative risk ratio of 1 1.53 the equation for the estimated log odds of adenosquamous category 1 versus category uh, 0 adenocarcinoma is negative 1.95 plus 0.78 times age group. So that will be the estimated log odds for category 1 versus 0. Um, um for, yeah the second uh, the second pain so if you exponentiate the beta estimate uh, for pin number two you'll get the odds, the estimated odds ratio or relative risk ratio equals 2.18 so what can we interpret here we can interpret like this the odds for all the subjects population to have other types of cancer in comparison to adenocarcinoma is 1.53 times higher than the younger subject population sorry wrong spelling the odds for all the subject population to have adenosquamous carcinoma in comparison to adenocarcinoma um, Sorry, the odds for all the subject population to have adenosquamous cancer in comparison to adenocarcinoma cancer is 2.18 times higher than the younger subject population. Alternatively, um, we can interpret the odds by, by saying this, all right? For women diagnosed with primary endotrial cancer, all the subjects aged 65 to 79 years old relative to younger subjects aged 50 to 64 were more likely to have their tumor categorized as other types than as adenocarcinoma bracket estimated odds ratio equal 1.53 and were even more likely to have their tumor classified as adenosquamous cancer then as adenocarcinoma um, the estimated odds ratio equals 2.18 inferences all right inferences again remember when we talk about inferences it means we are interested to look at the hypothesis testing in this case we are interested to look at the p-value whether it is lesser or greater than the uh, set level of significance and also to look at the confidence interval whether it crosses uh, zero for the beta or it crosses one for the exponenti exponentiations of the beta so the hypothesis testing can be done by examining the p-values based on what statistics Okay, if you set the level of significance at 0.05, then the p-value less than 0.05 indicates statistically significant associations between the covariate and the outcome. And um, also, this is the confidence interval. It should be down here, all right? Um, so the confidence interval for the estimated log odds that does not include zero indicate statistical significance at 0.05 level and the confidence intervals for the estimated odds ratios that does not include one indicate a significant associations between the covariate and the outcome and i hope you are good at calculating the confidence interval what you need to know is the estimated beta value and then uh, plus or minus uh, 1.96 this is for 95 percent 
a level time the standard error standard error of the uh, beta and this is 95% confidence interval for the estimated odds ratio you need to exponentiate the uh, beta plus minus 1.96 times standard area standard error of, of beta model model comparison all right we know that you can use the p-value from the work statistic to look at which variables are important or not important if the covariate has the p-value of bigger than 0 0.05 for example you might say that the covariate is not important in the model so looking at the p-value uh, like that or based on the word statistics is all right but it is a better way to look at whether this covariate is important to be in the model or not that is by doing the likelihood ratio test okay you can add or you can remove a covariate from a model by using like ratio test okay um, for example if we have a model model a uh, with the log likelihood of minus 524.371 and you have another model model b the log, log likelihood is minus 510.213 then the value of test statistic is uh, minus two times the uh, uh, the log likelihood minus the, the other log likelihood and you get the g value and you look at the degree of freedom and from there you look at the p value if the uh, the null hypothesis is that the two models are not different okay um, all right uh, this is what test okay what test uh, is the, the Z test that you can see in the in the regression parameter tables okay um, it is less preferred because this what test is very much affected by the sample size all right so the hypothesis that uh, hy null hypothesis the beta uh, values uh, equal zero and the um, for pain number one and the null hypothesis um beta 2 1 for pin number 2 also equals 0 so the what statistic uh, is given as the z value which equals the uh, the beta hat value divided by the standard er standard error of the beta values okay for example we have this beta value 0 0.7 8 1 divided by the standard error of beta 0 0.3 8 you get 2.07 and this is uh, 0 0.43 for the beta value and divide by the standard error standard error of the beta value you got 1.32 uh, you need to look at the degree of freedom and from there you can look at the p-value uh, in this case um, uh, what you need to do is just to understand that that's how we can we get the z, the z value and let the computer or let the software calculate the p-value and uh, if you understand the log odds equation if you understand the log odds ratio and you if you understand the odds ratio then you know it is very easy or it is easy to work with a model that have interaction between covariates right so if for example you got a covariate x1 and x2 and they interact meaningfully then the log odds okay then the log odds become like this okay the log odds uh, for uh, outcome um, equals something given uh, x1 x2 and interaction between x1 and x2 equal a g plus beta g1 times x1 plus beta g2 times x2 plus beta g3 times x1 times x2 so where g equals 1 and 2 in in the case where you have three uh, categories uh, of outcome variable okay um, likelihood function for polytomous model okay um, this is not discussed discussed well in uh, in applied logistic regression book 
if you want to understand better the likelihood function then you can read chapter 12 polytomous logistic regression in logistic re regression self-learning text by Klembaum and in the chapter um, um, uh, Dr. Klembaum um, shows how you calculate the probability because if you remember uh, in a data set where the outcome variable has three levels or three categories the probability is like this okay probability of uh, outcome equals zero given x plus probability outcome equals one given x plus probability outcome equals two given x equal one in logistic regression you have only two of this all right but in multinomial logistic regression you have more than two categories so the 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 sum of the probability of uh, of the outcome equal to one so because of that you need to calculate the the logic for the uh, uh, equation one or for uh, association number one or for pin one and you have to uh, calculate the um, the logic equation for pin number two and then so on and so forth for example if you the outcome has three categories and then you have for the uh, pin uh, number one or equation one h1 x equal alpha one plus the sum of um, beta and x and for um, logic equation uh, two for cat maybe uh, h1 is uh, one versus zero and two is two versus zero then this is the um, the log odds equation and from this one you can calculate the probability of having the outcome equal zero which equals one divided by one plus exponential exponentiations of um, pin 1 plus exponentiations of logic equations of pin 2 this is the probability of uh, outcome equal 1 and this is the probability of uh, having uh, outcome equals 2 but at the end the the sum of this probability and this probability and this probability equal 1 All right so um um, these are the references um, I think uh, these two texts are very very important uh, chapter 8 in applied um, sorry not applied survival okay, applied logistic regression and also in chapter 12 uh, in logistic regression by Klimbaum, all right and um, the book by Long and Fries uh, is all right, okay, if you want to work with um, Stata. Okay, thank you.